Hello and welcome to the Scatterable channel and today let me tell you why you should care about the RX 7700 XT not just for PC gamers but for the whole graphics card market as a whole especially in comparison to what we could get in the form of the RTX 4060 Ti. But first, let's talk about some context. So two years ago, AMD released the 6700 XT at $480, and at the time, people were hoping this would be a 3070 competitor for less. And what we got instead was an RTX 3060 Ti competitor at $80 more of a price. And to make things worse, the RX 6700 XT actually turned out to be a really good cryptocurrency mining graphics card, which made its stock and availability even worse. But move on one year, as cryptocurrency like Ethereum is rumored to move from proof of work to proof of stake and the overall demand of graphics cards going down, we started seeing price cuts. And that was especially reflected in the Radeon RX 6000 GPUs like the 6700 XT, which you can now get today for $340 brand new. So whatever the RX 7700 XT needs to be, needs to not only one, live up to the hype, but beat the value of the previous generation of RX 6000 cards for the same price and be able to tackle whatever Nvidia is going to throw at it, most likely through the form of the RTX 4060 Ti. So we'll get right into the video real soon after a word from our sponsor. If you're looking to kit out your gaming PC with some high quality memory and storage, then look no farther than what Lexar can provide. For M.2 SSDs, they're offering some really high-end enthusiast grade drives like their NM800 Pro, which is a PCI Gen 4.0 M.2 SSD that can boast up to 7,500 megabytes worth of read speed. And then for RAM, if you wanted to hop onto DDR5 with your next CPU and motherboard upgrade, then they do have their Ares DDR5 RAM kit that comes in many different sizes and speeds, like this one being a 32 gigabyte kit that can go up to 5200 megahertz. So there's a lot more than this than what Lexar can offer you for your next memory and storage upgrade in your gaming PC. So if you wanna learn more, then be sure to check the link at the top of the description. Okay, so before we talk a little bit more about the 7700 XT, let's discuss a bit about the rumored RTX 4060 Ti. Coming in at either $450 or $400, it's going to feature eight gigabytes of VRAM, and it's going to have rumored performance of around a 3070 Ti, which doesn't look that great on paper, especially knowing how the 4070 launched to very mild reviews and is currently struggling to sell since it didn't completely outright replace the 3080 it was meant to go up against. Not to mention it only comes with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which is definitely of a downer. So the 4060 Ti coming with eight for a near $400 graphics card, not to mention it'll even potentially have a smaller memory bus coming in at 128 bits versus the previous 3060 Ti's 256 bits doesn't look that great for the 4060 Ti. But the rumored RX 7700 XT has some tricks up its sleeve that I think will make it a very compelling graphics card option even at its MSRP, thanks to tricks like its cheaper manufacturing process. So one thing you'll find on all Radeon RX 7000 graphics cards is a multi-chiplet design, meaning that the primary die is held on a more expensive and smaller five nanometer manufacturing process, but the cheaper and bigger memory caches are on a six nanometer die. By splitting up that manufacturing process on two different dies, I think Radeon can outbeat Nvidia in terms of pricing across this whole range of graphics cards, which I think we've already seen so far from the 7900 XTX and the 7800 XT versus the 4080 and 4070 Ti in terms of just pure rasterization performance while costing the same, if not less. Unlike Nvidia, which are locked to that four nanometer manufacturing process, which is going to extend across the whole range of their graphics cards, which can explain why their 4090s and 4080s and even the rest of their graphics cards like the 4070 cost much more than the previous generation. In order to make ends meet for Nvidia, this could explain why Nvidia has had to really cut down the die size of their 4070 and 4070 Ti and even 4080 in comparison to the 4090, which has the full die occupied for the most part. And I think even to make those ends meet even further, Nvidia is potentially reducing the amount of VRAM they put on their graphics cards to help turn a profit, which could also potentially explain why the 4070 Ti and 4070 only come with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, despite costing $600 and $800 respectively. 
So going back to AMD's chiplet design, in terms of performance, I don't think it yields anything extraordinary or anything special. But what I think is going to start showing is how much cheaper it is to produce those graphics cards versus Nvidia, which means lower down the graphics card line for say mid-range to bunch of graphics cards, Radeon could have a leg up in terms of the amount of performance they can squeeze out of their graphics cards and chip designs while keeping costs low. Which leads me to my next point, which is VRAM. I think that multi-chiplet design is what is allowing AMD to put more VRAM on their graphics cards versus NVIDIA, which is shown with the 7800 XT and XTX, coming with 24 and 20 gigabytes of VRAM. And the rumored 7800 XT is probably going to come with 16, which means the 7700 XT will probably come with 12. And with how relevant having more VRAM in a graphics card is becoming these days with running certain AAA titles, having that extra VRAM, that being 12 gigabytes of VRAM versus say eight, I think it's going to become a requirement for running pretty much Starfield or any of the new games coming out later this year, as from what we've already seen so far with comparisons between the 3070 and the RX 6800 with the eight gigabytes of VRAM versus 16 gigabytes of VRAM debate. But I think the real conundrum is how well the 7700 XT will do versus the original 6700 XT. Because not only does it have to outdo it in terms of price to performance, but the 7700 XT should meet up to what is a 6800 XT in terms of rasterization performance. Because again, going back to rumors and speculated performance, the 7800 XT is rumored to be at about a 6950 XT in terms of performance, which would make sense meaning the 7700 XT should be about a 6800 XT in terms of rasterization performance, which would put it at about a 4070 in terms of rasterization performance for about 150 bucks less, which doesn't make sense. But again, that's just speculations and rumors. So if we really do get a $450 Radeon RX 7700 XT with 12 gigs of VRAM at the performance of a 6800 XT, with the Radeon RX 7000's better ray tracing performance, it could be a very compelling option again for PC gamers looking for that next graphics card upgrade that's one they can hold on to for a long time. Whereas the 4060 Ti, unless Nvidia learn that it is time to not overcharge for their graphics cards, they need to meet the current demands of the graphics card market and more realistically price their graphics cards, will unfortunately lead way to more expensive graphics cards as the line goes down to potentially their 4060 and even 4050 graphics cards. Again, rumored to have eight gigabytes or six gigabytes of VRAM. So that is it for today's video. And if you've enjoyed this news slash speculation slash rumors video, then be sure to give it a like. And if you like what you've seen so far, then do consider subscribing. So that is all I gotta mention for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And this is the Scoutable Channel, signing out.